Hi, I'm Emily Lee, one of the contributors to the Teacher Portfolio and Preparation Series. In this lesson, we'll be talking about conducting a job search. A job search takes time. We cannot overemphasize the importance of starting early. If you're watching this video at the beginning of your studies, you're right on track. But if graduation is only a few months away, do not panic. You're starting now, and that's what matters. In conducting a job search, the starting point is you. Be clear about who you are and what you're looking for. Understand your own transferable skills. Be clear about what you would like to do and what you may no longer wish to do. And consider where you would like to see growth in your career. In an ideal situation, you'll want to search for the types of jobs that will help advance your career and professional goals. A job is more than the tasks at hand. It includes the context, the people you'll interact with, and the institutional culture. Also, don't forget the salary and benefits. What's important to you when you look for a job? When faced with the looming reality of graduation, we sometimes hear students say, I'll do anything. This is not helpful. If you hear yourself saying this, dig deeper. It will soon become obvious that you have negotiables, non-negotiables, and priorities in your criteria for an ideal job. Having a clear idea of what you're looking for, all the while remaining flexible, will help those in your professional and personal networks help you. Each person's list of criteria will be different. Notice how time frame may change your list of priorities when you're looking for a job. For example, a PhD graduate in Japanese may look for lectureships in the short term while searching for a tenure track position in the long term. Hold your vision, but cast your net wide. We're not suggesting that you limit your search to be so specific that only two or three positions fit your criteria. While you should aim for your ideal, we also suggest casting your net wide and being open to possibilities that you may not have considered before. New positions and new job titles are being created all the time, and your background and experience may be exactly what employers are looking for, but maybe under an unfamiliar job title. Practically speaking, the way to cast a net wide is to use broader keywords or phrases in your searches. For example, search for Spanish rather than only searching for teaching Spanish. You can also widen your search with terms for the transferable skills you would like to exercise. For example, searching for research or assessment will allow you to find additional language professional positions that may focus on aspects other than teaching in your skill set. As you can see, the skills of a language teacher can be transferred to many types of positions. For example, language media center coordinator, study abroad officer, evaluator. By casting a wide net with a broad view of your complete skill set, you'll be able to find many more positions available than a narrow search. A narrow search can be discouraging and not exactly realistic, especially given your wide range of skills. Quite a number of past TIPS participants have pursued these wider net jobs and found them to be a good fit. For some of these roles listed, additional training or experience may be required. This is where getting a head start on your job search puts you at an advantage. It allows you to examine current job descriptions to identify your own areas of strength and potential areas for further self-study and professional development in preparation for the ideal positions that you find. Where can you look for job listings? The most popular places to look are websites with large listings, such as the Chronicle of Higher Education for academic positions, Indeed.com, currently one of the most popular sites for a pretty comprehensive listing of advertised jobs, and the job section of any specialized professional organization, such as TESOL, ACTFL, or MLA. Language-specific and area-specific professional organizations will also have their own job listings on their websites or through member publications or listservs. 
Sometimes open positions at specific institutions cannot be found through these larger search engines. So it's also a good idea to periodically check on the employment page of specific institutions you'd like to work for. For PhD candidates in an academic job search, be aware that many assistant professor postings come out in the months of September and October for the following fall. Some new positions may be posted later, depending on each department's or university's timeline. Many support positions, such as academic advisor, specialist, and coordinator positions, may be posted in the spring when units have a clear idea of their funding for the following year, or after certain people have given resignation notices for current posts. As a language professional, you undoubtedly belong to select professional organizations, attend specialized conferences, and subscribe to favorite listservs. We encourage you to search for the international, national, regional, and local organizations, conferences, and listservs relevant to your areas of specialization. They provide invaluable resources not only for your job search, but also for your continual professional development. Balancing a specialized search with casting a wide net we also encourage you to explore some of the resources that may seem peripherally related to your area. You can find a listing of organizations for language professionals on the TIPS website. This slide also shows a sample search. This brings us to the location-specific search. In some ways, a location-specific search is helpful because the limit in geographic area can focus your search. However, if jobs in your area of interest are limited, it may also require you to widen your net as far as the type of position you're looking for. In a location-specific job search, you'll want to identify all the institutions that may house an interesting position. This can be done through connecting with the local chapters of relevant professional organizations, attending local conferences, and subscribing to relevant newsletters and listservs for the area. If an institute of higher education in the area has a department in the same field, the department will often have its own listserv that sends out job alerts that may not be easily found elsewhere. You may be hesitant to inquire, but I'd like to emphasize that in my experience being a jobs listserv manager, I've always added professionals new to the area and sometimes even students who are looking to learn about the field. As long as your inquiry is professional, I believe few listserv administrators would deny this request. Something to keep in mind, especially if your search is limited in location, is how to look for hidden positions. What's a hidden position? It's a position that's not currently being advertised. For example, it could be within a company that's looking to create a new position for a new need, or it could be that a university professor will soon be retiring. A currently advertised position, such as for a visiting assistant professor, could also point toward a possible future hire. If you're a new PhD student, it's a good idea to take a closer look in our field and make a guess on which departments across the country or in the world may be looking for a new professor in five to 10 years time. What do you have to do starting from now to be competitive in the field when the time comes? If you already have a list of ideal organizations to work for, keep up to date on the changes and openings for those organizations. Even if there are no current job openings, you can still write a professional formal email of inquiry, including your CV, and ask to be kept in mind for future opportunities. I can attest to having personal experience of finding two hidden positions in this way. Another way to learn more about specific organizations or the lay of the profession in a locale is through the informational interview. An informational interview is not a job interview. Through a polite inquiry, you can request an informal 20 to 30 minute meeting where you can learn about another professional's take on the local job market, views on the industry, and their organization. 
It's a space for asking smart questions and information gathering. When requesting an informational interview, the way you frame your inquiry is important. Specify the information you're seeking and why. While the focus of the informational interview should always be on listening, you should arrive prepared, just in case your interviewee begins to interview you. If you're a current student, use your status. For some reason, when you say, I'm a student, nearly everyone's immediate reaction is, how can I help? If you receive the opposite reaction, then perhaps you've found a less than ideal place to work. If you're no longer a student, don't worry. I'm always amazed at the degree to which people are eager to help when you ask. We ourselves are perhaps also guilty of forgetting this point. When you're on a job search, make sure that everyone around you knows it. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, only about half of job seekers reach out to their personal networks. So we're reminding the other half to also remember their supporters. Remember, visualize your ideal job, tell everyone about your search, and cast your net wide. If you have yet to begin, start now.